Hey everybody, Mike from the Focus Garage here. It's been about a month since we picked up this 2017 Rogue Glide Ultra with just around 300 miles on it. So, because I can't leave anything stock and I've already done about 2,000 miles on it myself, I want to go ahead, give you guys a walk around, give you kind of my first thoughts and impressions on it, and show you what I've done to the bike so far to kind of customize it and make it my own. So, without further ado, let's hop right into it and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So there's really only two main things that I've done to the motorcycle so far and no the camera is not crooked the bike is just on its side stand so that's what it looks like there. I've gone ahead and I installed some slip on mufflers so you can see them right here much bigger outlet um, as far as diameter goes than the stock mufflers. Woom woom. And they are the megaphone style of slip ons so these do just replace the factory mufflers and add some noise to the motorcycle. Um, I will be making a future video of what these sound like. They are quite a bit louder than I expected them to be and quite a bit louder than stock. Uh, so that's one thing there with it. And then I went ahead and I installed a Moons MC tail light. I'll go ahead and flip on the bike right now to show you what that looks like. So, the neat thing about this taillight is obviously, as you can see, it is LED and it does have integrated turn signals into it there. So we've got it flashing there and I'll go ahead and I'll tap on the brake for you just so you can see what it looks like. So, real exciting. I'm sure everybody wanted to see what that looks like there, but as far as mods go, we've got the LED tail light there, and then the slip on mufflers there. And no video at all will be complete without some initial kind of thoughts and impressions about the motorcycle. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump right into that right now and let you guys know kind of my first thoughts about it after having it for about a month of ownership now. Now, as you can already see, I put about 2,000 miles in just one month of riding. And uh, Honor and I do have full-time jobs, so I was riding this bike to work a lot. Uh, within the first or second weekend of getting the motorcycle, I took it on a 500 mile day trip to somewhere in central Indiana and back. And that was actually with uh, two up riding the whole time as well. So uh, first impressions are it is absolutely incredible to me the way you can stack miles on a bike like this and not be fatigued. So obviously you've got this giant fairing up front here. You've got a very, very long wheelbase. You've got suspension with a lot of travel. You've got, you know, huge forks here. And uh, what that all does is it aids in riding comfort. Obviously, that's no surprise to anybody, but coming from the bike that I came from and then going on to the Yamaha, uh, I felt the Yamaha was a huge uh, improvement in comfort. And then going on something like this, it's just, it's absolutely incredible. So you're able to ride this for hours at a time in you know windy conditions, colder conditions, and it just doesn't beat you up. Uh, you wanna keep riding, you wanna keep finding more roads, and just gives you an excuse to keep taking the long way home, taking the long way to your destination, so to speak, because you're just not getting beat up. Another thing too is that I can now ride to work without having to carry a backpack. With my last motorcycle, obviously there's no storage on it at all. So you ride to work, you've got to put your stuff in a backpack and I bring a laptop to and from work with me. So I'd be stuffing a laptop in there. I'd be stuffing my lunch in there. And then it is kind of businessy where I work. So you'd have to worry about maybe packing up a spare pair of shoes so you can change from your riding shoes to dress shoes. I'm telling you, with this bike, it's absolutely insane. I throw whatever I need in the tour pack, throw some shoes in a saddle bag and I'm good to go. The coolest thing is too is that when I get to work, I wear you know usually like a jacket and a helmet. I can leave that on the bike. I don't have to carry that with me from the parking lot into the building and then keep it all at my desk and then worry about you know dealing with all that at my desk and cluttering up my workspace during the day. I can literally leave all of my riding stuff on the motorcycle while I'm at work and then everything's lockable so I've got the key right here. You just go ahead and you lock the saddlebags, you lock the tour pack and you don't got to worry about it. You get back to work, everything's good or you go back to your bike after work and you're ready to ride. Everything's there and you're just ready to go. Um, <clears throat> obviously, this doesn't lean as, fast, as hard as the Yamaha. It doesn't go as fast as the Yamaha, but it was never bought as a replacement for the Yamaha. It was bought as a motorcycle to try something different. Now, I would have never ever thought that I would own a motorcycle like this, this young in my life. Um, I maybe saw interest in these as like, you know, you're like retirement age and you've got a reason to, you know, ride because you've got a lot of free time. But bikes like this never really interested me uh, at a young age because I'm like, oh, you know, they're heavy, they're slow, they're stupid. Why don't you just ride in a convertible or something like that? 
And I'm telling you, a lot of people have that mindset, which is you know totally fine. There's something out there for everyone. The coolest thing about motorcycles, very similarly to cars, is that there's so many different styles of motorcycles. You know, there's dirt bikes, there's you know um, naked bikes, there's super sport bikes, there's cruiser bikes, there's touring bikes, there's super moto bikes. There's, I'm telling you, there, there's mini bikes. Everything, um, you know, for everyone's style, which is cool. You know, there, there's definitely something out there for everybody to enjoy. Until I rode one of these, I just didn't understand it. Uh, a good friend of mine actually has a um, Ultra Limited, and uh, he, he really, really likes that bike. And I'm like, you know, it's kind of an old man bike that's like a geezer glide, a grandpa motorcycle. And then he's like, dude, just try it out, just try it out. I'm like, no, I really don't have any interest in that. And you know, you're kind of scared of trying it because it's big and it's heavy. And then you go ahead and you give it a try, and you're like, it's pretty cool. You know, it, it's got the V-twin noises because obviously it's a big sloppy tractor engine and these newer ones with the Milwaukee 8, it's, it's a very, very solid power plant. Sorry about the fly in this garage here. And um, you ride in, it's very, very torquey. You know, they, they make torque all over the power band, all over the rev range and they're just very, very eager to get up and go, especially for big and heavy bikes. And the more I rode it, you know, he was like, oh, just, you know, take it for a little trip and, you know, take it around town or whatever. So I obliged, you know, I rode it around I'm like, He's, he's right, it's a pretty awesome machine, I get what it's all about. And I, I wasn't really even in the market for one, kind of like I said in the intro video when I got this bike, that it was one of those things where I was tossing the idea around, I was looking at dealerships, they were expensive, I really didn't want to kind of spend that money on a motorcycle, and I found one that was pretty much leftover new at this guy's house that bought it, only put 270 miles on it. I went there, I talked to him, I rode it, the bike was as new, and you know, he made me an offer that I couldn't refuse, I had to buy it. So. Here we are today, that's how I ended up with that motorcycle. And now the more and more that I ride it, the more and more this has become my primary motorcycle. It's, it's become to a point to where I find myself riding this bike because it's just comfortable, it's enjoyable, and this is gonna sound crazy, but it's easy to ride. Yeah, it's big, it's heavy, and it's long, but that weight really disappears as soon as you're moving. And after you get comfortable tossing it around in a parking lot at low speed maneuvers, uh, everything else really just feels fine with the bike. So essentially, I do wanna keep this bike, and I do wanna kinda go through a mod path with it. Um, Obviously, it's never going to be a sport bike. It's never going to be a crowd track or anything like that. But these bikes do respond well to mods. Uh, simple things like an intake, a tune, a two-in-one exhaust, and you're making pretty good power. Uh, if you want to go a little bit farther than that, you can throw a cam in it. And believe it or not, it's, it's a very simple engine. It's a V-twin engine. It's just a single cam right there in the middle of the block, you know. Um, so you're not doing anything fancy with, you know, overhead cams or anything. You can put an aftermarket camshaft in it, and you can pick up a lot of power with that as well. So... I'm kind of exploring different mod paths with the bike, seeing what I want to do to it <clears throat> as time goes on with it. Um, you know, I, like I said, the bike is still under warranty till the end of this year here, so I'm trying to make sure that I don't have any of the pre-existing Milwaukee 8 issues that some people do suffer. Uh, biggest one being is uh, transmission fluid um, seeping into the primary. So I've been watching that closely here. I've got one oil change done on the bike. I'm going to check that out in a little bit here and kind of see where I stand as far as the uh, transfer fluid issue goes. but. If I don't have any issues with that, I'm gonna dig right into it and kind of start ripping apart this bike and doing some mods to it because don't get me wrong, it's very, very fun in stock form, but with anything, you always wanna tinker with it a little bit more and the amount of torque that these things make uh, just feels so good and knowing that, you know, you could do some simple mods and really up that torque, it just keeps you, you know, wanting more. So it's kind of where I'm at with it here. Uh, you can see, obviously, I love the look of that bike. It's, it's, it's a very, very cool looking machine, uh, especially, you know, you've got that Daymaker twin headlight uh, night night riding is absolutely great with the bike. There's so much light output on the road. Um, and then obviously the headlight is fixed. It doesn't turn uh, with the fairing or anything like that. So <clears throat> you've got pretty good light on the road when you're going around turns. You know, your lights aren't all over the place or anything like that. And since you've got two giant LED headlights, you get a lot of light out there. Um, things I really dislike about the bike, it's not many. Um, so obviously I cross shop this with like gold wings, or victories just to see what else is out there for the money and the things that I would nitpick about really aren't even that major so yeah the victory motorcycles or the Indian motorcycles excuse me have an adjustable windscreen and they've got ride modes I don't know ride modes especially on a big heavy touring bike like this to me are kind of gimmicky they're like a set it and forget it thing so if you can nail the throttle mapping right out of the factory this bike is a ride by wire you don't need to mess with it and this bike's throttle is very very good oh also <laughs> cruise control is an absolute game changer. Uh, any motorcycle I have moving forwards, I think that's something that I'm gonna wanna look for, at least the ability to add. 
because it is so nice on longer rides to just flick that cruise control on and not have to worry. Take your hand off the throttle, relax for a little bit, you know, kind of loosen up your pose, adjust, you know, how you're sitting on the bike. It's so nice to be able to just set cruise control and not worry about it. You know, once you get with the flow of traffic, you're just moving, you got cruise control on. Um, so anyways, gripes that I'd say about the bike. The bike revs a little bit high for highway speeds. When you're doing 80 miles an hour in six gear, the bike's at about a little over 3,000 RPMs, with, uh, which once you put an exhaust on it, it is a little bit droney, a little bit buzzy. So, um, you know, different gearing uh, would have been nice. I don't see there's much of a difference between fifth gear and sixth gear. Um, so they could have made that sixth gear a little bit longer. Also, for a $30,000 motorcycle when it's new, your hand controls, none of them are illuminated. Now, I know that's rare on motorcycles, but I know a lot of cheaper KTMs have that as well. And on a freaking huge touring you know, bike where a lot of people are going to be doing night riding, it blows my mind that they don't offer um, lighted controls on the motorcycle. So you know, that, that's gripe number two there. Also, um, having no ride modes, you know, it's a two-sided thing. Even though it's gimmicky, I think a lot of people would like to see that, especially when the competition has that. And then the uh, front suspension is not adjustable at all. The rear suspension, you've got a preload clicker where you can kind of up it or down it, depending on if you've got you know more, pe uh, more people, a person with you or a lot of luggage with you, you can add preload or remove preload based on how you see fit and your weight. Whereas the front forks are not adjustable at all. Um, no preload adjustable, uh, no damping adjustable, nothing like that, so they're pretty much fixed. Now don't get me wrong, they are a Showa dual bending valve system and they are absolutely fantastic and there's really not a need to adjust them, but again, I think when you're working, looking at the competition, and a lot of the competition offers that, it is something that people might you know shy away from the Harley with. Um, you know, on top of that, this is a 2017, so it's got the prior model infotainment system. I have played with the newer models with the 2019s and up. Uh, that is a huge improvement, so I can't knock this bike for its infotainment system because they've addressed all of my issues with that in the new model. So if you're looking at a Harley and infotainment's important to you, and you want Apple CarPlay on your bike, go ahead, look at the 2019s and up, and they'll have that for you there. Outside of that, <clears throat> just you know the higher revs on the highway um, and the no ride modes thing, there's really no gimmicks with it or anything that I can complain about. I mean, the bike does exactly what you'd want and expect it to do. So as long as you're going into it with a real, like, realistic expectation, you will be happy. That being said, that's going to wrap it up for this one here. I just wanted to give you kind of my initial thoughts and impressions and things that have stuck with me in the beginning here. So drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Would you ever own a bike like this? Do you own a bike like this? What are your thoughts about you know me buying a bike like this? Are you upset? Are you happy? I, I don't know. <laughs> Let me know what you think. Uh, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll be pushing out tons of more content. Anna's been working on videos. I've been working on videos, so we're going to make sure to get that stuff out to you so you guys can check it out and let us know your thoughts. The Yamaha is sitting right there. Harley's sitting right there. GTI is sitting right there in the background. This garage is getting pretty full, so doesn't mean there's not room for more toys, right? <laughs> this is Mike from the Focus Garage, and I will catch you guys in the next video.